This is part three of Event History Analysis course. It is devoted to longitudinal data format. To conduct good event history analysis, one needs not only good data, but also data in good format. Data come in all sorts of formats, and unfortunately, most don't come in a suitable format. The type of format we need for EHA is called a long format. In this screencast, I will show you how long format look like. I will then show how to solve some practical difficulties such as converting a file from wide format to long format, converting a file from mixed format, that is a mix of wide and long format, to a long format. The long format can be thought of as period observation format. This means that the successive periods of ep or episodes that an individual went through over a lifetime are recorded on different lines. All periods or episodes are linked together for the same individual using an individual ID. In a long format, the number of observation lines, that is, the number of records in the file, only depends on the number of periods or episodes recorded for each individual. There is no need to define a maximum number of records. Take note that the variables, that is, the columns, are given the same name for each period or episode. The episodes are linked to the individual ID in the first column. In this example, there are three episodes for the first individual, 11 for the second individual, and 3 for the third. The variables date of birth, DOB, and sex are repeated for the same individual because they do not change over time. The episodes are ranked by date from the earliest episode to the latest episode. The date at the beginning of the episode, date bag, and the date at the end of the episode, event date, are obviously changing from one episode to the next. You will notice that the date at the beginning of the first episode for each individual is equal to the date of birth. You will also notice that the date at the end of each episode is the same as the date at the beginning of the next episode, except for the last episode. We will come back later to this date on the last episode, but take note that it is the same date for all individuals. The status at the end of each episode is captured in the, in the variable event code and is also changing from one episode to the next. What you see on this slide is the long format that we want to end up with. Unfortunately, data do not always present themselves like that. Let's look now at other formats. Let's start with the wide format data that you can also name individual observation data. The most important difference with the long format data is that in the wide format data, all events pertaining to one individual are recorded on one line. In other words, one individual corresponds to one line of data. A variable pertaining to different episodes has to be repeated for as many episodes as necessary. The variable is actually repeated to the maximum number of episodes found in the database. For example, if only one individual experienced 120 episodes, then each variable pertaining to episodes must be repeated 120 times. Also, if a variable describes the same characteristics for different episodes, the variable would be given different name for each episode. In the example below, event code represents the event that ended each episode. This variable is repeated for each episode and given the name event code 1, event code 2, event code 3, etc. until the last event code maybe even code 120. For the sake of saving space, a maximum of four episodes are represented here. 
Take note that some event code variables, and also event date, are missing when individual did not experience three or four episodes. To complicate things further, there is another longitudinal data format that mixes wide and long format. We will call it a residency episode format. Why talking about this format when we can already guess that it will not be very user-friendly? Because this format is actually very common in HDSS and has been used or misused, I should say, by a number of data analysts. This format looks like the long format because each episode is recorded on a different line. The variables are not named after the rank of the episode, as in the wide format. However, contrary to the long format, only the episodes corresponding to periods of residence in the study area are recorded in the data set. We call these episodes residency episodes. The duration of each episode is defined with two variables, a start event with corresponding start date and an end event with corresponding end date. Because not all individuals lived continuously in the study area, there are sometimes gaps between residency episodes corresponding to periods when the individual was away. These gaps generally follow an out-migration from the study area. A gap may be followed by a residency episode when the individual in-migrate in the study area. This format with gaps is at the origin of many data management mistakes and is no longer advisable. Now, what should you do with wide format or mixed format data? You should convert them into long format. If you have wide format data, you need to attach the repeated variables with a suffix that is a number indicating the rank of the episode or a unit time. For example, if you know that each episode represents the rank of the child, the suffix will be 1, 2, 3, etc. until the maximum possible rank of a child in the database. The same would apply too if a variable is recorded at each round of data collection. In the case of a panel data set, the suffix would represent each panel year, for example, 2004, 2006, 2008. Then you will have to use the reshapes data command that converts data from wide to long format. Look for the help menu of reshape for details on the syntax. If you have mixed data format, the easiest way is to create two separate files, one for start event, another for end events. Then you rename the event variables with the same name in the two files, for example, event code. Lastly, you append the two files. All this is explained in the manual attached to our BMC research note. So now back to the long format data set. In this long format data set, the variables event code and event date mark at the end of each episode. A variable is usually computed, date bag, to indicate the beginning of each episode. The long format allows us to follow up each individual from birth to the last valid observation time. Some individuals are observed only from enumeration. But then the first episode identified the period from birth to enumeration. The same applies to people who were observed only from the time of first in-migration. But then what about the gaps when the individual migrated out of the study area? These gaps can be deduced from the sequence of events as identified by the event code variable. Actually, both residency episode and gaps can be deduced from this sequence. The residency and gaps actually relate to a very important concept in event history analysis, the concept of population at risk. For any study area, the population at risk is defined by entry into and exit from the study area. Only the episodes of residency in the study area will be taken into account for event history analysis. 
People can enter the study area by birth, by in-migration, or by enumeration. People can exit the study area by death, by out-migration, or by end of observation. The end of observation is called right censoring. We will come back to that in the next lesson. This diagram is showing the different migration status that individuals can have depending on their migration experience. Inclusion in the population at risk may occur through in-migration, the individual is an in-migrant, or by enumeration. Take note that enumeration is independent from the individual's intention. It is called left censoring. We will come back to that later. Exclusion from the population at risk may occur throughout migration. If the individual never returns in the study area, then the individual is lost to follow up. In case of a return, an out migration followed by an in migration, the individual is a return migrant. This episode out of the study area is called a gap. The individual is also excluded from the population at risk after death. This death event is the subject of much attention in HDSS data analysis. From the long format, one can draw the lifeline of any individual in the database. Here is an example of a woman in Agincourt HDSS. She was born on the 3rd August 1985 and enumerated on the 21st of August 2002. Then she changed household within the HESS on 1st July 2007, perhaps because of marriage. Take note that the code exits and entry are used to identify a local move, that is a change of residence within the study area. This is not to be confused with entry and exits from the study area, that is, a change of residence crossing the study area boundaries. Also, also in some HDSS dataset, a difference of one day will be given between the internal exit and entry. This individual moved out of the HDSS area on the 10th of November 2007. This is an out migration. She returned on the 30th of March 2008. This is an in migration. Shortly after her return, this poor lady died on the 15th of October 2008 at the age of only 23. Her lifetime is depicted in the diagram below the table. The episodes out of the study area are drawn with hash lines. She was enumerated, then she exited and entered, she made a local move then, then she out-migrated and re-entered the study area with an in-migration and then died at the age of 23. You can train yourself in drawing the lifeline of the three individuals in this table and answer the following questions. What is the migrant status of the first person at last observation? What is the migrant status of the second person on last observation date? What is the migrant status of the third person at the time of his death? And to your opinion, why is it useful to have an OBE for out-migrant and dead people? Many thanks for your kind attention.